That there is Laura fishing efficiently for the first time. Efficiently. Efficiently. She is learning to fish in the creek with a rooster tail bait and she's doing a great job. And this here is Catalina who is ready to jump in the water at any time after she eats her little snack here. And there's Rocky over there. He's checking the perimeter, making sure that we're all safe. This here is called family. There's people in our families who don't know how to do certain things. They have the ability to do it. And I would even say access to the resources to do such things. They've just not actually went out and did it yet. You see where I'm going, baby? Oh, yeah. <laughs> God is so good. It says that he's blessed us with every spiritual blessing, every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. We're heirs, in Romans 8 says we were heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. That means, let's just break that down and think about this. We are heirs, our inheritance is God. He is our inheritance. Thank you, baby. You want to feed the fish? Yes. Okay, feed the fish. Not the paper, but this. Put that in, get that out. Get that out. And feed it, feed it to the fish, baby. Good job. For the fishies. Yay! Mira, mira. Let's see if a fish comes and eat it. Nope sinking to the bottom. Good job, Katha. Good job. Oh. You want water? There you go. So we're heirs of God. That means our inheritance. That's what an heir does is he has an inheritance. Our inheritance is God himself forever in eternity so our inheritance is God and if you're in if your inheritance or you're an heir of a person that means you are an heir of the things they possess so if we have an inheritance and we do and God is our inheritance that's how you explain all of the things that are in heaven. Ephesians 1 says that he's blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly place. And that's a good thing. The Greek word eulogia, again, we'll make sure everybody understands this. That's what happens at a funeral when you die. They say something good about you. God has said, our Father has said everything good that he can say about you. Why? Because he said everything good that can be said about Jesus. All of the promises of God are spoken in the word concerning Jesus. Every promise is yes and amen when you're in Jesus. So, 2 Peter says according to his according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness. All of those things in heavenly places are the things of God. So you have God and you have all of his things, all of which we are stakeholders or part owners of that. Because we are children, because we are adopted sons, in the family of God. Now I'm going to do a teaching breaking this down further later. But the analogy I want you to see is Laura here. And Catalina. You have a woman. 
at mature age and you have a younger woman who is called a child now. Catalina has everything given to her already. She has the ability, she has all of the things given to her that she needs to do what Laura, her mom, watch out for that. When you cast, you don't wanna catch her hair. That would hurt or her face or anything. <laughs> So Laura's just learning something that we will teach Catalina here at a young age. She's gonna learn how to fish starting now. Catalina is only almost three years old now. Laura, being older, is just learning, but has she always had the ability? Yes. Has she always had access to fishing poles and the ability to go? Yes, she could have went and got a fishing pole anytime. Now, Catalina, she is my heir she has me as an inheritance her father everything that i do applies to her okay everything that i own in my household she has access to and that everybody is who you are in christ go ahead cut the cast it you know sit her in your lap baby you sit her in your lap and she can So this is us. Here's your parents trying to teach you something. Showing her, hey, does Catalina have the ability to, to fish? Yes. How about the responsibility? Maybe not. Maybe her brain is a little too underdeveloped or unresponsible. <laughs> but guys, you guys own God. I mean, I'll say, hold on, take that back. You don't own God. You're an, you're an heir of God. Okay, he owns you. But what I'm saying is for eternity, you are family. He is the hope of your calling. He is the riches of the glory of your inheritance. God is your inheritance. And everything that he has is his riches. And the riches of, in glory, glory is where God dwells. He dwells in heaven. That's the heavenly places. Where God dwells are all of his riches. That's all of his blessings. And you have an inheritance that's according to the riches of his glory. So everything in heaven that God owns are the things that you are to experience here on earth. But the only way to experience that, guys, is through faith. You have to make up your mind. You have to go to him. Let him teach you all things. Okay? He wants his will being done on earth as it is in heaven. The Holy Spirit is given to you so that you can learn of those things he's freely given to you. 1 Corinthians 2. He'll teach you all things. 1 Corinthians 14. And guide you into all truth. What is truth? Well, truth is the word of God. John 17. Sanctify them through thy word. Thy word is truth. His word tells you what the truth is. His word shows you what those things in heaven are. Those are the things that are his will. His word is his will. It's his truth. He is the God of truth. Everything that he does is truth. He is truth and all of the things that he does is done in truth and it is truth. Therefore, his will that is in heaven, it's his desire, his mandate and his command and it is his will that it be done. The things that are in heaven being done on the earth. People a lot of times try to judge the word of God by their experiences. They're like, well, you know, people aren't getting healed these days. They don't get healed anymore. They got healed in the past. That's because they look around and don't get biblical results when they see people that are sick or dying of cancer or whatever the case is. And then they change God's word to line up with their own experience. Now, that's called a natural-minded person. They're looking at earthly experiences and they're judging heavenly things by earthly experiences. If you judge your earthly experience by heavenly words, you're always going to be wrong. You have to look at the Word of God, which is heavenly, heavenly words that are based upon 
heavenly experience. God's word is forever. Psalms 119, 89. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. His word is forever settled in heaven. It is heavenly experience, not earthly experience. So if you look at the word of God, it says that sin shall not have dominion over you. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer in sin? I ask religious people sometimes. I ask them, hey, is it possible? You caught a, look at you guys, you caught a leaf fish, a branch fish. Look at that. Good job. I'm so proud of y'all. So, you have yourself a heavenly word. I talked to the, he the religious person. I asked them, so they say something about miracles aren't for today or whatever. And I asked them, let me ask, I'll say, let me ask you guys this. Can a person live free from sin? Did he save you from sin or did he just forgive your sins or did he save you from sin? A lot of times they'll say, well, no, no, you can't actually be free from sin. We're still sinners. We're sinners saved by grace. I'm like, okay, well, his word says sin shall not have dominion over you. It says, how can we live in sin? Because we've died to sin. How can we live any longer therein? And they'll say, well, they try to justify. Why? Because they look in their own life. They look through their earthly experiences. And they don't see people living free from sin. Therefore, they justify and change the theology or they change the word of God. Okay? To say that people don't actually get free from sin. They don't actually die to sin. They don't actually, you know, get completely free or delivered. Why? Because they're looking at earthly experience. See, the Word of God, Romans 6, that says you are dead to sin. You are risen with Jesus. And that you have to consider yourself to be dead indeed unto sin and alive unto God. He says, it says, Know you not that to whoever you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey. So he says, if you serve sin, you're a servant of sin. If you obey God's Word, then you're a servant of God. That's the word of God. So that word is forever settled in heaven. Now, that is based on heavenly experience. You can't take heavenly words and line them up with your natural, carnal, earthly experiences. You can only take God's word and line it up perfectly right now with heavenly experience. Thank you, baby. Appreciate it. Mommy. Take care of this. Yeah. Huh? Fishing? Yeah. You want to fish? No, no, no. This is for fishing. We're fishing. When we catch a fish, you can play with this. And I'll show you. I'll teach you, okay? I'll teach you how to use all this, okay, baby? You see that? That's yes. for when we catch a fish. A fish. See. My God, a fish. See. See, yeah. Fish. Yeah, wait till we catch a fish, okay, baby? Okay. All right. Got that? Get agua. Get agua. Cup. Agua. Get some water. See? Agua. Get you some water. That's just the workers. Okay, so what I'm trying to say, everybody, is we're out here beautiful, you know, enjoying this beautiful experience. It's a part of Earth that reminds us of heaven. Okay? We're taking time to do family. No, got the water's out there, not water in here, baby, okay? And we're doing family on earth like it is in heaven, right? Now, we don't take the word of God and judge it by earthly experience. You have to take the word of God and judge it. And you have to realize that the word you're reading is based upon currently right now how it is in heaven in heaven sin has no dominion on anyone who's of the household of god who lives on the property of god within the family of god as a citizen of heaven in the heavenly jerusalem there is not earthly experience in heaven it's heavenly experience. And all of the word of God is based upon how it is in heaven. When you obey that 
heavenly word. You are taking the heavenly blessings, the good things of heaven, the things that are of our heavenly inheritance. You are beginning to do that will of God that's in heaven on the earth. You see, guys, this is our destiny, our predestined experience that we are to have on the earth. We're predestined to be conformed to the image of Jesus, walking by faith, obtaining the promises. Maybe that's hooked on your seat there. All of those promises of God are to be obtained on earth. They are heavenly things that we are to obtain and live according to on the earth. I will do a teaching here really breaking this down. But the analogy is this, that we want to just, the Holy Ghost, just put it on our heart. We're sitting out here and it's so beautiful. Everything you guys need, you have access to. All you need is God. He is I am that I am. He is the great I am. He is. What you need is him. He's your healer. He's your provider. He is your banner, your protection. He's your righteousness, your peace, your shepherd. He's your all in all. Jesus sits on the throne and you are seated with him in heavenly places. You are in him and he is in you. Everything you need is him. Everything you need is him first and everything that he has comes with him. You got married. I got married to Laura. She got married to me. She got me. And she got everything that I have. We are now joint heirs, joint owners of everything that's within our household and our property, everything that's in our name. Now we are joined to Jesus. Everything that's under his name, which God has put all things in subjection under him and put all things under his feet. He's put as head over all things to the church. We're his body who filleth all in all. We God fills all in all in us. What I'm saying is, is we're joined to Jesus. Everything he has, everything he is, we have him and we have everything him and his father have. We are joined together. If you want to go swimming, Kata, hey. Hey, Kata, let's go past this little waterfall and let's go swimming. Let's go. Let's see if we can do it on camera. Here, push out, baby. Let's see if we can let you guys experience going down this. Whoa, be careful. All right, babe, this is going to be a... Oh, man, I don't know. We're going to have to go on the far right over there, baby. You see it? There's the mini rapids. <laughs> this is going to be fun. Let's see if I can do this on camera without dropping the camera. Rocky, let's go, boy. Come on, buddy. Come on. Let's go. Come on, buddy. Good boy. Okay, Rocky. Guide the way, buddy. We're going to go far right. You see where we're going? All right, Katza, sit the thing. Sit down. Sit down. Hold on. Sit down, sit down. Look at, okay, look at me or mommy. All right. Let's see here. Okay, baby, you see where we're going right there, right in that little part of the white, the white water. Oh. Hold on, baby. Mita, Mita, Kata, look at that waterfall. Yay. The rapids or whatever you want to call it. Woohoo. There we go. Good job, baby. Right there. Oh, we're going to hit this rock. Yeah. Woohoo. Look, Captain. Look. Look at the rocks. Woohoo. Yay. This is fun. Look, Captain. Look. Go right there, baby. Yay, we made it. Woohoo! 
So, that's joy on earth like it is in heaven. Hallelujah. Look, baby, it's a beach right here. Let's stop here. Okay, okay. Okay, Kata. You want to go swimming? Okay. Here, stop it. Put your thing and stop it, baby. Ooh, ooh. I got it. Okay, let's stop here. You're going to go swimming, okay? Okay, baby. Yep, there's a beach over there. We can take her and she can go swimming. Okay, so let's turn around. Now we're going to park right here. I'm going to hook it up right there with that stick. Okay, anchor it in and then we're going to... So everybody, thank you for enjoying time with our family. I'm going to step out in the cold water. Here goes. Hold on, Katha. All right. Woo, Katha, did you like that? All right, we have ourselves hooked up to the tree. Okay, come on, Katha, let's go swimming. Yay! She looks a little sleepy, too. Beach out in the middle of the mountains with water that's colder than the beach in the ocean. Woo! Look, Katha! Yay! All right, back to the, what I was saying, back to the lesson. You guys have access to God by faith. You have access to God himself. You have access to the things that God owns. And you have access to his wisdom, his knowledge, his grace, everything. He's here to teach you like I'm teaching Kata. Kata, ven aquí, mira. Look, you see this? Look, I, I, look right there. Those are deer tracks, deer. Look, see that? Look, more. Look, follow, look, deer. Let's go. Yeah, look, that's a deer track, baby. Muchas deer, a lot of deer around here. Well, she's learning the things that her father knows. I want you guys to know there is no difference with you. There is no difference. You want to say anything, baby? There's no difference in learning from your earthly father to your heavenly father, except your heavenly father. If you ask him any good thing, he wants to give it to you. Earthly fathers, if you ask him for a fish, he ain't going to give you a stone. Come on, baby. Look, baby, out here. Yay! Woo! Look, baby. Yay! Interesting what you were saying about me and Carolina. Um, this is like my tech, second time fishing, and you know, I've, I haven't caught anything yet. Nothing. I, I have no clue about it. I haven't even Googled anything on how this works. I barely know what Brock has kind of like told me what to do, but it, I don't know the details. I don't know if. if the, you know fish come out at a certain time or anyway you get my point it's it's about the heart it's about doing things despite of you knowing what you're doing or not it and I know it sounds <clears throat> many maybe funny <clears throat> but sometimes you just gotta go and it's it's, it's your will, it's your heart, is is you working in uni union with with the Lord. And uh, just now I was praying. I'm like, okay, Lord, I have no clue about this, but I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> catch something today um, in Jesus' name. And it's Rocky, it's about Rocky. that attitude, that Rocky. confidence, and despite of being Don't a rookie and me, who know how how you call it. You, casting. Casting. Okay, I'm learning. Even even though I'm casting, maybe funny, weird, and you know, it looks I, ugly. If, right, a professional <laughs> would look at me like, oh my god, what a joke, right? But you gotta try, right? And it's it's about never, never quitting, never stopping. Um, and that's that's the kingdom. We need. 
think we need Come dig a hole dig a hole we need the body of christ dig a hole, Kata. to encourage us to to teach us to mentor us and yes jesus is our our king you want to go mentor, you want to go pee should i teach her how to go pee in the creek every country girl needs well, to learn she's, that she's done it before in the woods so i'm sure <laughs> well, maybe, what do you want to do? Let her pee over there or pee in there? Let's go. Well, guys, welcome to our family. These are the things we talk about. And she's... Got so you that? Need, you you gotta need go pee? someone to encourage you. We need, the, we need each other. We need the body of Christ to, to come and lift you up. Because there are seasons in your life that you don't, you don't know how... To, how to get yourself out of that mess um and we we need each other that's 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 why the lord created his body you know he's the head he's the cornerstone but he's we mom. are the body and we abide in the vine in him he is alive he is the truth and you know it's something as simple as fishing you know all it takes is somebody yeah. else here you go i'll take it somebody else in the family Showing you how to do it. Because someone else in the family has fished a lot. And they know how to do it. Yep, that's an elderberry, baby. Good job. Hey, watch out with those sticks over there. Just do it out over there, baby. <clears throat> so, here we are. Walking with God on the earth. But our Heavenly Father is in heaven. He sent his son to show us what a heavenly man looks like living on the earth doing heavenly things. He gave us the example. He taught his disciples. His disciples demonstrated the same thing the first son of God did. The newly born again sons of God did the same thing the firstborn son of God did. Guys, you all have access to God his power and his authority, his grace, his goodness, and his mercy, his provision. Everything you need is in him, and it's in the heavenly places. You, Those things that you've been blessed with are being done right now in heavenly places in heaven. The riches of his glory are being done in heaven. And you, by faith, have to decide that you are going to do those things and go after those things, and you will obtain those promises on earth just like they are said in the word of god rocky get over here leave him alone rocky come here here boy so y'all be blessed you know you already have been blessed with everything now you have to seek god pray go to your heavenly father and start talking to him about doing those things obtaining those things and walking in those things you can do that by other sons of God teaching you and showing you how to do it. Why? Because just like fishing, here's the tools. All you need is somebody to show you how to take this fishing pole and cast. You may have never done it before. You may have never actually walked in blessings financially. You've never walked in divine healing. You've maybe never walked in faith. You may have never experienced God actually answering your prayers. And when you ask, you actually receive. When you seek after things, you actually find. How many of you have experienced knocking and the door was opened? That is exactly what I'm talking about. Loving your enemies, not just loving those who are in your family. You see, everything that Jesus said is what is being done in heaven right now. And he wants you to do those things here on the earth. We walk by faith, doing on earth what is written in the word, which is actually what is actually showing us what is in heaven right now. God took what's in heaven, written or wrote it in the word of God, to show us on earth what is in heaven. Okay? Everything we have, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, showing us Jesus, even the book of Acts with the apostles, all of that, including the rest of the New Testament, is showing us, after the cross, those who have the inheritance as new creations, how to do 
the heavenly things that are in heaven on the earth. This is our inheritance. This is our calling. This is the will of God for our lives. This is your future. This is who you are. You're a new creation created in Christ Jesus. His workmanship created to do good works. What works are those? Those are the heavenly things that need to be done on the earth. When you love your neighbor, when you take care of the orphan and the weak, when you take care of kids and the elderly alike, when you're feeding those who are hungry, clothing those who don't have clothes, and you're meeting needs and providing and healing the sick and casting out devils and setting people free from darkness, teaching them to walk in heavenly light. Guys, that's what's being done in heaven. Everyone in heaven is walking in the fullness of these things we're discussing. They're already walking. Uh-oh. Rocky got something treed over there. This is the beauty of us having time here on earth. If you still have time, if you still are able to hear me in this video, I'm telling you right now, that is God speaking to you. That means you have time. That means there's permission. That means God wants you to. He's working in you right now, both to will and to do his good pleasure. If you have a desire to do those heavenly things, it's because your nature has been changed. You were born again. The Spirit of God is in you, and he wants you to live and do the things on earth as it is in heaven. Now, if you don't want those things, or if you don't have the Spirit of God in you, teaching you and speaking to you about these things, if He's not taking you through the Word of God and teaching you things, that means you're not born again. That means what you need to do at this point is make yourself right with God. You need to make up your decision that you want Jesus, that you want God Almighty to be your Father, that you, if you make up your mind right now, that you'll turn away from doing things your way, your earthly, natural way. Stop judging his word by your experience. Go to God as supreme. Go to God as your Lord, Jesus being your Lord, that everything that's his, that are his words, things that he did, the things he teaches, you will take what he teaches and take it as law, that you will take it as your command, that that is the way and no other. You are going to have to decide that Jesus is your Lord, that you will live and do as he says. And when you make that decision, he sends his spirit into your, into your inner man. He makes you a new creation. As a new creation, you have a divine nature placed inside of you. You have access to God Almighty. You can come boldly to his throne you can seek God. You can talk to God. You can hear God speak to you. His spirit is in you to teach you. He will show you things to come. He'll show you things in your future. He'll put men and women in your life to guide you, to teach you, and to show you how to hear God, how to walk with God. He will show you the ropes. They will show you and teach you about your heavenly father, about Jesus, about the Holy Spirit. They'll teach you who the devil is and how to be God's son how to be a servant to man, and how to be the devil's master. Those are the things you must learn. It's just like fishing, just like learning to do the basic potty training, like feeding yourself, not using your hands, using a fork. Every single thing I teach my kids, right, are the things that I do daily as a mature man. They're just at that stage right there. You too can be a child of Almighty God, and He will take you through, raising you up in eternal life. As soon as you repent and call out to God Almighty, Jehovah, the God of the Bible, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and you call out to Jesus, you will be saved from darkness, saved from Satan. Satan will no longer be your father. He will no longer be your master. He will take you. The Spirit of God will come in you and takes you out. He you die with Jesus, and we put all that old man in the grave. We typically do that in baptism. Okay, baptism is an outward show of what happens to you spiritually when you repent and come to God and are made a new creation. You put your old man in the grave. You bury it in the water. When you come out of that water, it is showing that you were dead with Jesus. Your old man's buried in the grave 
Now you are resurrected with Jesus. You are now walking in newness of life, like a brand new baby. John said in the book of John, chapter 3, Jesus said it's being born again of the Spirit and water. When you're born again, you enter the kingdom of heaven. God is your Father, right? God and all of His support staff, all of His angels are now there to teach you as a prince to grow up and be a king. A little toddler, a little infant, you're going to grow up and be a son. You're going to walk and handle and do the things that your father owns, that he does. You're going to be responsible. You're going to be like Jesus. And he's going to teach you how to get from an infant to grow into a baby, to a, to a child, to a teenager, to a son. He wants you to walk in the fullness of God, just like Jesus did in his apostles. So what do you do? You repent, you turn, you make up your mind right now that you want that. That's called believing. If you've made up your mind right now, if in your heart right now you have heard these words I'm saying and you want that, that is you believing. Those of you that believe, here's what you must do. Repent. You call out and say, Father God, repeat after me right now. Say, Father God, I turn away from doing things my own way. Say, Father I repent. I turn. I'm done. All of my life right now, it's dead with Jesus. No longer am I choosing and doing everything the way I see it. From now on, I serve you. I live for you. I am yours and you are mine. Jesus, fill my heart now. Give me your spirit. Make me a new creation now. I am sorry, and I will no longer live the way I've been living. I will live for you. Jesus, you are my Lord. God, forgive me, cleanse me, wash me, and make me new. In the name of Jesus, amen. Now, I'm going to pray for you right now. In the name of Jesus, sin, sickness, disease, all of darkness, all depression, all anxiety, everything that's of the devil, in the name of Jesus right now, you will go from them now. You will leave their minds, their soul, and their body now in Jesus' name. They belong to Jesus. They are no longer yours. They are dead to sin and dead to you. They are out of darkness and they are in light. In the name of Jesus, Father God, fill them with your spirit now. Touch them in their body. I thank you their body is healed, that by your stripes they are healed. By your stripes they are free. They are forgiven, delivered, healed, set free now, right now, in Jesus' name. Amen. So be it. This is the way it will be and no other. In Jesus' name. Now, every person out there that made that prayer, that right now is still praying, right now receiving life into your body, into your soul, receive the peace of God now. Right now, let joy fill your heart right now. The love of God is being shed abroad right now, being lavished abundantly all through your heart and your mind and your soul. In the name of Jesus, you're free. That's the life of God inside of you. The Bible says, Jesus said, out of your belly, your inner man, will flow rivers of living water. That's life inside of you, like a well. It's a spring bursting, like a geyser bursting up out of your heart now, out of your spirit. It's bursting up out of your spirit, into your soul and your mind and your body right now. The life of God, it is bursting up into everlasting life right now. Life is bursting up in you right now. It says that he'll quicken, he'll give life to your mortal body from your inner man. Now that the spirit of God is in you, now you are his. Now Jesus is your king and your Lord and your master. Now, right now, right now, lift up your hands, surrender to him and say, Lord, you are my king. You are my all. You are my Lord. I serve you. I worship you. Teach me your ways. Now that he has filled you with his spirit, now that you are healed and set free, even, even right now, you must right now decide to go all the way out and obey him. First thing you'll do in obeying is contact me. Contact someone that's, that you know is helping you, that sent this video to you. 
Contact somebody that can baptize you in water. If you don't have anybody, contact me. I myself will do it, or one of the people we're training, we will do it. We have colleagues and friends all over the world in a ministry called JGLM. Someone near you. We know somebody that can help you. No matter what country you're in, where you are in the world, we have people that we can point you to that can get you healed, get you set free from all demonic oppression and possession. They can get you healed, set free, get you baptized, and they can disciple you. God has a way for you. If you choose his way, he'll put you in touch with the right people. Okay? Now, contact us. First thing you want to do is be baptized so you can confess in front of others that Jesus Christ is your Lord, that your life belongs to him now and that you will serve him. You're going to tell others and proclaim to others that Jesus is your king and you're going to get baptized. You're going to put that old man in the grave and you're going to come up a new person and you're going to confess to others this is the way it's going to be. I'm going to serve God and do things his way from now on. Okay? So you need to do that. Get baptized and then... Find, you know, get a hold of me and we're going to help you do the next thing, which is get filled with the Holy Ghost. There's a prayer language of heaven. There's a language of heaven, okay? There's languages on the earth and there's a language in heaven. Now, in heaven, you'll be able to understand all tongues, okay? But there is a language of God. It's called praying in the Spirit, praying in tongues. We will help you walk in that. Be filled with the Spirit so you can be empowered to be a... And I don't want to go too far in this, but he will fill you with the Spirit and give you power. All right? After that, you can speak in a heavenly language and walk on earth like it is in heaven. The next thing you want to do is gather with other believers. We can put you in touch with people where you can worship. You can start living this life with other people who are living the same life. That's called typically church, but it's a gathering of the people who are the church. I am the church. You are the church. Anyone that has the Spirit of God in them is the church. Okay, those people gather together and they worship God Almighty together. Okay, they do this life. They obey the Great Commission. They go and they share with others. They love others and make disciples. They obey God like you want to do now. Get with them. Start doing life with them. We'll help you do that. After that, you just continue obeying God. Get in the Word of God. Start reading. Okay, start studying the Word of God. Get in the New Testament. Read, you know, the book of James is a good place to start. You can read the book of James with another believer. They can help you understand and rightly divide and understand and interpret the word. They'll help you and they'll guide you through all of that, okay? Once you do that and you continue growing, there's places. There's on YouTube and things you can go learn. There's all kinds of resources out there. There's no excuse for anyone not to walk with God and to understand truth, okay? We'll help you do that. Now, we love you. Now, at this point, contact us so we can help you go further, all right? Now, we're going to get back to canoeing and do, having some fun. Catalina looks like she's having a lot of fun over here. <laughs> it's beautiful out here. Look at this. A glorious day here in Tennessee. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. We love you guys. Now, go find some beautiful worship music and go worship him. Lift up your hands and sing unto him and bless his name. Catalina. What is it, Cata? What is it, baby? What is it? Wow. That's so beautiful. Look, look. Show everybody. Look, look how beautiful. Wow, they're snails. Oh, snails. There you go. Rocky, don't do that around us, buddy. Wow, this is so cool, Kata. Say, Kata, say bye bye to everybody. Say bye bye. Bye bye bye. Bye bye. God bless you guys. We love you, we love you guys. Thanks for taking time and spending time out here with our family. And I'll learn how to fish eventually. I promise you. We'll put a picture on here of the first fish he catches. How about that? All right, everybody. Say bye bye, Kata. Bye bye, All right. Say. God bless. bless. Now. Say, now. say in Jesus name, be healed. Now. Now. Amen. All right, y'all be good. Love you. Bye. <laughs> Yay, look at the <laughs> Look at the colors. Pretty fish. Mommy, I'm good.
Look, Kata, Kata, look, mommy's got a fish. Bonita, look how pretty. Take a picture. I want to get the pretty colors. Oh, it's really spiky. Kata, quiet. Beautiful. How you call it? Perch. Take a picture? Yeah. Okay, let's put it back.